If you want to be able to create AI art and images right within Photoshop, you should check out Image Creator by Alcave Vision. It's a free plugin. You just need to sign up for an account and download the plugin and install it in Photoshop and it's pretty straightforward. Now, Alcade Vision are the sponsor of this video. If you get a chance, check it out with the link in the description below if you want to learn more. So to get started, head to imagecreator.alcadevision.com and from there, you can go in here to download and you can choose which format. I actually recommend the Creative Cloud format. If uh, that doesn't work, then you've got Mac or Windows. And then when you're ready, you can actually go to sign up. I click sign in and it says no account, so I sign up enter my details and go from there. Now I have Photoshop open, I go to Plugins, Alcade Vision and Image Creator. I sign in, gives me a little information about it and then I'm good to go. But I do need to open a document first in order to get started. So now I'm gonna get, get straight into image generation within Photoshop using text to image. So the idea here is if you've got Creative Image Creator open it on the right, uh, basically I type in a prompt and I can create an image. There's actually a whole bunch of uh, different checkpoints here we can use. We can add more models on the website, which I'll go through later on. But essentially, we're going to go through and find a model to work with. We've got things like Stable Fusion 2.0, Open Journey. But if we keep scrolling, we've got SDXL 1.0, which is the latest version of Stable Diffusion. So if I click on that, it says this particular model doesn't support Control Net. We just tick to keep going. The positive and the negative. Now these are just suggested prompts you can try out. Negative uh, is words that it'll actually kind of describe what you don't want in the image. The positive, we can add in some kind of prompt and try and generate some kind of image. So I've got something simple here, an ancient warrior standing in front of a Japanese temple, SDXL 1.0. And if I scroll down, I've got some more options, guidance scale. So we probably don't need to worry about this too much, but you can adjust this up or down if you're going to try and change how much your prompt influences the image. Uh, seven is a bit of a sweet spot. That's why it's generally the default. Choose different samplers. Uh, if you're not sure about that, I would leave that as it is. Images, this will show us how many images will be generated. I can do two, one. I think I'll do down to one. But we'll go four, so we have a selection. Steps. Now, the more steps you include, the more it is included, the more sort of generations it goes through to create your image. So technically it would be better quality, but it actually gets to a point where the quality doesn't really improve and the image just changes. And 20 again is a sweet spot for that. We're gonna leave everything the way it is. We've got Laura's we can add into there, but we're gonna check on that later. But uh, first, now we're just gonna get into it and it says here an area must be selected. Do need to highlight and select the whole thing. I'm gonna click generate. So these are our images straight out of the box. I can click on one, I double click, and it shows up on my page. But what if I wanted something more photorealistic? For starters, I could start by playing with the prompt. I can add in some descriptive words like photorealistic image, cinematic movie still, 8K, high detail, high resolution. And that will help sort of guide uh, Stable Diffusion to make the image I want. So again, I, hit I come down, I hit generate, and while it's generating, you can go to your history and it shows a history of the things you've generated here. And then you can see what we've been able to create. I really, I really like this one with the hat. So I'm going to double click on that. And now that image is on there. And I can go over to my layers. And we have the new image and the old image there as layers I can turn on or off. So we can always come back to whatever we've basically added and go from there. Uh, as I click on different areas, I can do things like upscale. So I can upscale an image. I've double clicked and it's brought it in at a higher resolution. So what I can do is go to layers and you can see how we've got this much higher resolution image here. I can reposition it or I can actually just duplicate that, put it onto a new layer or something like that. But uh, so you can actually upscale within the image creator. I'm gonna remove that for now. now. I'm gonna keep going because we wanna try and do a little bit more with this image. What I'm gonna do, now for starters, I can choose Stable Diffusion XL1, but there's also another Dream Shaper, which is XL1.0, which has another sort of cool, uh, sort of like style added to it. These models have been trained a little bit differently, so you get different results. So if I put the exact same prompt in and I select the entire canvas, hit generate, now again, a lot of similarities. I can double click on this one to import it. And you can see it's still, it's very similar. So the style is a little bit similar to the last one, but uh, just a little bit, a little bit different because of the model. So you can see how we can actually choose a whole bunch of different models to generate with. I'm gonna to change to RPG. 
because I want to see if we get a completely different look. So I'll hit generate again and check out the difference. We import this one, we get a different look again. This one, different look yet again. So you can see how it's how it's very powerful when we change from model to model. But there's also LORAs. These are these are models I can sort of add on top of the mix to get a little bit more sort of variety. So I can come in here and see if there's something that I think will work well, such as Moxin. I can click on that, hit generate. You can see how it's influenced the style. We're still using the RPG model, but now we're added the Moxin LORA on top of it and it's created some very different looking imagery. But it doesn't have to be quite this full on. I can go back up and where it has weight, I can make that 0.5. So I can half the effect of that LoRa. I hit generate again, and you can see it's definitely influenced the image, but it hasn't gone for that full illustration look. So we can slide that scale back and forth until we get a result that we really like. So some of these have turned out really good, and there's some really interesting images here. So the next one we're gonna look at is image to image, which is basically using a reference image to create AI imagery from. So I've got this guy, pair photo, this guy from Pexels imported into my Photoshop document. Under the function here, I'm gonna go image to image. Now what I also need to do is again, select the whole canvas and I've got my image. The strength is at five. I've got no lures selected, but I'm gonna choose a checkpoint. So a model to work from. So let's find something like, go with deliberate. And I'm gonna add, so I've got a man's face with a mean stare, electronic components, cyberpunk style robotics just to add a little something different and scroll down here generate and just see what we get so if i click on this one here you can see how it's referenced the image if i switch between the two the layout is basically the same but it's added in some of the components i asked for and again if i click on this one same again we get that really cool look to it but what if we want to keep experimenting with this the first thing i need to do is actually just turn off the layers i'm not using and highlight my main layer again. Otherwise it'll actually reference the new creations when I go to use image image again, image to image again. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go down to my LoRa here and I'm gonna add one in. I'm gonna say make selection, come down. I'm gonna choose add more details. I'm gonna put the weight at 0.6 so it's not too overbearing and then see the difference in the results we get. We've got this one here and this one and they do look, I believe a bit more detailed. If I go back to my first one, I believe this one, it looks the best. And if I compare that to one of the other ones, you'll see that the features are a little bit better and it is a little bit improved. But if we come back to our original again, I can actually continue to add more LoRa's to this selection. So I'm gonna go down where it says add more details. I'm gonna click new to add in another. And I can add in a different style altogether yet again. I could even go for kids illustration which uh, I don't know if that really applies, but I'm gonna go 0.6 again, and let's see what it does with that image. I do believe it's made it a little bit more cartoony. I believe we've lost some of that detail, but we've gained, gained a bit of a cartoony look. Overall, I think it's a pretty cool effect. So now we're gonna check out Control Net, which is kind of another way of using image to image, but not it's not really the image to image function. But the idea is you have different ways to let an image influence your uh, generations. So the way it works is if I've got text to image here and I'm gonna choose my model, I go Dream Shaper version eight. I'm gonna type in a prompt such as a robot looking at a techno organic planet, AK realistic 3D render. And what I wanna do is come down to control net. I open that one up and I've got a few different models. There's different versions of canny depth. Uh, there's also open pose, but uh, what we're gonna do is just have a look at a few of these very uh, quickly. First one we'll look at is depth. If I go to depth version 11, what this does is it'll actually process the distance of certain objects in the image. And the way it works, if I go over here to process, so under control net, I've chosen depth. I go to process. I wanna make sure I choose depth here. And I'm going to select my image and apply. And you'll notice on the right over here, I'll input this as a layer so we can see it. We have a rock here in the foreground, which is white. This person is into the image a little bit, so they're not quite 100% white, but still fairly bright. And in the background, you can see how things are further away. The darker they are, the further away they are. So what I'm essentially gonna do, I'm gonna go back to my layers, turn this one off. And I've, so I've got control net here, I've got it ticked. 
So now I can actually just generate and see what image I get. So our images over here are done. Now these are square and they're actually a little bit squashed because I'm working on a more of a rectangular format. But if I pop these ones in, so you can see if I turn on our depth map and then add this image, you can see how it has mirrored the layout. Even here where the two sort of peaks are in the mountains, it's actually popped a couple of moons or planets in there. So it has used that to create a sort of like a depth map of like, okay, these are the far away objects. These are the closer objects. Even these rocks here are in pretty much the same position. So if I actually make this semi-transparent, you'll see exactly what I mean. And again, I can go through and I've got the same effect on all these other images. So that gives you a little control over the layout of the image, but there's actually more. It's not just a depth map that you can use. So I'm gonna remove all this stuff and open up another image. So now I'm gonna look at another version called, another model called Canny under control net. I have this drawing I made years ago of Batman, which is probably a good example being a sketch. It doesn't have to be a sketch, but this is gonna be a really good way to illustrate how this feature works. So I'm basically just gonna type in here, cinematic render of Batman. I'm gonna keep it really simple to see what I come up with. Although we will put in there 3D render. Again, I've Dream Shape of version eight selected. Now I come down to control net where my control is and the weight is set to seven. So we're gonna experiment with this a bit because the weight will choose how much this influences the image. So we'll go with 0.7, which is the default for now. Canny version 11. If I go over to process, we can still choose a few different ones here to play with. There's scribbles and different levels of it. We'll stick with Canny for now. Uh, and I'll show you what it does. I'm going to select the canvas. So Control A, hit apply. And I'll input that as a layer so you can see. It's created a bit of an outline. This is the basically the outline it's going to work with for when it creates the image. So I'll turn that layer off. And I've got realistic 3D render here. I'm actually gonna change that because it's actually an outline. I'm gonna go with, I wanna go with an anime style illustration manga. So we're gonna create an illustration of this. I'll just say bright colors, which is not really a Batman thing, but something to, to uh, sort of play with. And this time, let's generate and see what results it gives us. So we've got our drawing here and check it out. When I activate each of these four images, you can see how the pose is identical, even down to where the cape sits. It's used the outline as a reference. I can come up, and the bright pink is sort of that bright color that's been added. And even the buildings, you can see that they're a little bit flatter because we haven't actually drawn a background in, but it's really adhered to my, to my drawing pretty well. And so what we're gonna do now is actually turn all these off and experiment with the strength of the control net. So I'm gonna go back over to control net and control, and the weight is 0.7. I'm not expecting this to look great, but I'm gonna pop it up to one, which is a much higher strength, to generate and see how much closer it has gone in a relation to my image. Okay, so I turn this one on and you can see it's, it's actually adhered a lot more closely, and it actually looks better than I thought it would, but I think it's just a little bit too close, and therefore any of the sort of, some of the features in my drawing that might not work are kind of not, not really affecting it as well, but you can see how useful this actually is. But let's try it in the opposite direction. Let's give, so this is actually running stable diffusion. Let's give it a little bit more control over the layout. So instead of having one or 0.7, let's go 0.3. Okay, so once again, we have my image and you can see the layout is slightly different. However, the image is much nicer, smoother and sharper because we've given stable diffusion a little bit more sort of freedom to work with the image and not follow my outline to the T. So we get a more cohesive image. This is still fairly close. So if I actually turn this on or off, you can see it's slightly different, but still fairly close. So if you're looking to smooth things out a little bit, by bringing the strength down, you give Stable Diffusion a little bit more sort of freedom to work. So that is another thing that's worth pointing out when it comes to using control net. So just to show you another sort of control net feature you can use, I've got this guy here standing in front of a mountain and I wanna capture, it's a very basic layout. And I wanna capture that for my character, which is a cyberpunk businessman, a few other details to try and bring up the quality. I'm gonna come down to control net and instead of canny version 10, I'm gonna come down to segmentation version 11, go to process. I'm going to click segmentation and apply. So you can see how it's used segmentation to create a bunch of colors. If you have a quick look, there's some colors where the man is and like the sky and the mountains. So it gives us an idea of the layout of the image. So now I can use that to generate. So I'm gonna go generate my image of my cyberpunk businessman. 
Now check out how close the layout matches. It's almost in the, it's in the exact same place. And one is facing the other way. This way he's facing forward. So we've got some pretty cool images here. And not to mention, the image quality is really cool. The reflections in the metal, I think it's really great. But just the way it's you're able to take control of the layout with this uh, is a, it's a really cool feature. So do you play around with control it. There's actually a whole bunch of different models you can use. So uh, it's a pretty handy feature to play with. And so this time we're going to look at fill and how that works, which is basically a function where it allows you to select certain areas of the image and just fill in areas of it without actually changing the whole image itself. So I'm going to go into my layers first. I'm going to create a blank layer above my image. I found that gives me the best results. And this bit in the sky here looks a bit funny. So I'm just going to select above, maybe deselect some of the hair. And under my functions, you're going to go across to fill. And I've got a checkpoint here, a model. So this was created, this image was created with control net earlier. And I use Dream Shaper. So I'm going to come down and there's a Dream Shaper fill model I can choose. And what I can do is Cyberpunk Helicopter in the sky, dark, highly detailed, 3D. I've got my area. I select my area again. And so now I can fill this area with my prompt. I just hit generate. And you notice I have some helicopter images here. I can double click on one and it pops that helicopter image in the sky within the image. Now it's really cool because I can also come down here. Subpunk, Subpunk Cyborg Robot matching the theme of the image. Highly detailed, 3D, cinematic and see what it pops in that little space. Once again, I have some options and I'm going to go with say this bottom right one here and it's popped my robot into the scene, which is pretty cool. So you can see how this is a handy way to sort of change some of the areas of your images and improve certain features. So fill is a pretty powerful tool when you combine that with photos or AI art to sort of further tweak from there. So the next thing I'm going to show you is actually how you can manage your different models, LoRa's and sort of options through Model Hub. So you can see when we're creating images, so a text image here, we've got all these different checkpoints we can use. And you see here there's add more models. I can click on that or go to the website, but also the same applies for LoRa's. We've got these different LoRa's here that we can play with. We can add more LoRa's. So you can actually change the order, upload your own or explore other models on the website itself. So if I go here and go add more model, it will take me to my page. If you're not logged into your account, you will have to log in. But uh, I've got all these models here that I can use. And I can even upload my own model, but we'll get, get to that in a minute. What I wanna do is I've got a filter here and I can go from things like checkpoints or LoRa's or just a combination of both. I can also choose which base model. So if we want to look at Stable Diffusion XL 1.0, we can actually filter it down to those two. So we can actually look at those. This doesn't change the plugin. Just, this just filters on the view here, but the changes you make here in the order or any of the models you update will actually show in the plugin. So there's also access here such as public, which are platform models, community. So members of the community have uploaded models. So if I go to community, You'll see there's actually no models here, but uh, there's personal, I haven't uploaded any, but there are all the public models here available for you to check out. So you can actually just go through and filter the models that you wanna look at. So first thing I'm gonna do is if I go ch choose checkpoints, is if I've got checkpoint one, this checkpoint here for yes mix, if I don't really want that here, you can see first of all where it came from, you can see the models, so Stable Diffusion 1.5. You can see a bit of information and some images that have been generated with that model. I'm just gonna head back. Now, one thing I can do, if I go up the top here, I can edit or rearrange. So if I go to edit here, I can turn off certain models. So if I know I'm never gonna use this model or that model. So let's turn off, say, Ink Punk and Yes Mix. And on top of that, I'm gonna click Save and then you can see they're disabled. I'm also going to go to rearrange because what I want, I want Stable Diffusion XL to be at the top since that is sort of one of the more recent models. Dream Shaper for XL 1.0. I'll put that there and I click save. So now if I head back into Photoshop and this time I'm going to exit Photoshop, open it up again. So I've reopened Photoshop and you see here my checkpoint has defaulted to Stable XL 1.0 and it's at the very top. The next one, Dream Shaver XL 1.0 and I've changed the order and you notice that the ones we disabled aren't there either. 
So that's how I can actually change the order of the models in Model Hub. And you can do the same for LoRa. Like I said before, I change from Checkpoint to LoRa. And again, we can rearrange, edit, and we can even delete models that are available to us. But what if we want to add a model? We can upload a model, add a model. If I click Add, I can add a link to one or I can upload. So what we can do is go to a different website to find the model we want to download and then upload. This is Civit AI, and it's a place where you can go to download free models for Stable Diffusion. I'm going to click on Models over here and find one that we can play with. Juggernaut here looks like a pretty cool model. I'm going to click on it. This has what looks to be some really awesome images. I'm going to download it. So it's a big file. I'm going to download this file. Keep in mind, I want to keep this window open because I will need to reference the information when I upload. So coming back to Model Hub, if I want to upload my model, I click this button up here, the button that says Upload Model, and I pop the model details in here. Now, keeping in mind all this stuff, I will need to reference. So I'm going to actually open up this page as well so I can find the information I need and I can start to reference this information across. The checkpoint, so I keep it on checkpoint. It's a merge, so checkpoint merge. You see here it says base model, so we choose base model. You can type in the description if you want to. And I can make this uh, sort of limited or open for general use. For now, I'm gonna keep it private for the sake of the video because this is primarily to demonstrate how it works. It is version 2.2, Stable Diffusion 1.5. You can see here SD 1.5, so Stable Diffusion 1.5. And this is an image to image and text to image, so I'm going to put on that. It does support control net. I'm actually not sure. Uh, I couldn't find that information. I'm just going to say no for now. There are version change notes, so you can actually find some of those down here. Am I the author? I am most definitely not the author. And the source link, which actually popped up here, I will pop down there. But obviously, you want to describe the model a bit more better. Uh, a little bit more accurately. So this is like a photo realism. Now, this says the model name is already taken, so I'm just gonna put jug Juggernaut Private in here. Click Next. And now I'm on the next page. I can upload my files. So I'm gonna drag and drop that in there. It's a big file, so it's gonna take a little while to upload. I'm gonna say model size, full, floating point. If I come back over here under the information for safe tensor, you can see it's a floating point of FP16 and it's actually pruned. So I need to come back to pruned and FP16. It says the upload is successful. I click next. We do need to give the model an image. So I'll save this image. It does need to be a square image. So I'm gonna to have to crop this image quickly. I drag my image in and it also asks for me to upload some images as a gallery. So I will need to go back and just download a few of these images, drag those over, reorganize and publish. And now Juggernaut Private is an at attached to my account and I can use that model in Photoshop. So now I'm in Photoshop and you can see Juggernaut Private has been added to my checkpoint. But if I head back to Civit AI, I can actually click on this image and even test out the exact prompt in Photoshop. I can even check out the details like the steps. So we've got 30 steps on here. So I'll pump the steps up to 30, select my canvas, and I can generate an image using Juggernaut. And we've got some pretty cool images here. I'm gonna open this one up and check that out. A really, really cool high quality image. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna upscale, and check out the quality of this particular model after I've upscaled it using Juggernaut, also with the Al, with the Alcade image creator. Very cool, very handy plugin to use in Photoshop. So try that out by checking out the link in the description below. Otherwise, if you liked the video, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, hope to see you again next time. Have a great day and thank you for watching.